Hey guys, so uh, we're taking a look at right triangle trig and we're going to do some Sokotoa problems here that are a little bit trickier than your average uh, right triangle trig problems. We're going to include some like tricky algebraic stuff in this. So um, for a problem like this where you have a girl standing on a hill or whatnot and she's standing an unknown distance away from some flagpole and let's make the flag pretty just because that's fun. Why not, right? Okay. So what we do know is that um, from her line of sight, the angle of elevation is 12 degrees and the angle of depression is 14 degrees. We also know that the height of the flagpole is 80 feet. And so we've got a couple right triangles here that we can use. We don't know her distance to the flagpole and we actually don't know the distance, I'm gonna switch colors here, um, from the, this like line of sight up, so that's an unknown, let's call that a Y. And we don't know the distance from the line of sight down, let's call that Z, okay? So since we have three unknowns in this situation, we're gonna have to set up three different equations. Uh, an easy one is that Y plus Z is equal to X, oh sorry, not equal to X, it's equal to 80, my bad. Um, and then after this, we're gonna have to use some trig. So if I'm looking at this top right triangle, I've got the opposite side and the adjacent. And I know opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I know that the tangent of 12 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. And I also know that the, let's see, in this right triangle I have opposite over adjacent again. So the tangent of 14 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, so z over x. So now I've got three equations for my three variables, and now we're probably gonna have to use the substitution method. Um, we might be able to graph it eventually, but with three variables, we don't really have calculators right now that graph in three variables, and so this is sort of a substitution problem for us. Now, um, I know that if I wanna get rid of this x on the bottom, I can multiply both sides by x, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both of these uh, equations. Multiply both sides by x here, and I get x, tangent of 12 degrees equals y. On this one, if I multiply both sides by x, I'm gonna get x tangent of 14 degrees equals z. And now playing the substitution game, I see up here that I have y plus z equals 80, and I have y and z here. So I can add these two equations, basically subbing in for y and z, and make up a new equation. So this guy's gonna go in for y, and this guy's gonna go in for z. So now I've got x tan of 12 degrees plus x tangent of 14 degrees equals 80. And this is a place where there's a lot of different ways you could go. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different methods on this problem for getting past this sticking point. So method number one. I'll just circle it and call it number one. You could go straight algebra, strictly algebraic, and you could factor. Both of these have an x in them, and so I could factor an x out and get tangent of 12 degrees plus tangent of 18, or sorry, 14 degrees equals 80. And then sticking with my algebra, I could get x by itself by dividing. So I would say x equals 80 degrees over tan 12 degrees plus tan 14 degrees. This is probably the slickest way to go, the sort of path of least resistance. And then I'm gonna need my calculator. Um, I need to make sure that the mode of my calculator is in degrees because my problems are all using degrees. And then I would, in my calculator, plug in at, or sorry, 80, not 80 degrees, just 80 divided by, now here I have to use parentheses to make sure that I tell the calculator that I want all of this to be on the bottom of the fraction. And then I type in tan 12, close that parentheses, plus tangent of 14, close that parentheses and close the bottom parentheses. And I get 173.2. And this is most likely in feet. Oh yeah, it is in feet because the original problem was in feet. So here's one way to get x. Another way that I can get x, a second sort of strategy to get the same answer. If you are not a fan 
of factoring, if that doesn't seem like a natural move to you, you can, in this part of the problem, just turn tangent of 12 degrees and tangent of 14 degrees into their decimal counterparts. So for instance, if I type in tangent of 12, that's just 0.213. So here I could say 0.213x for tangent 12, plus, now I could figure out what the tangent of 14 is. It's 0.249, so this tangent of 14 is gonna become 0.249x equals 80. And then here, now we have the tangents gone, it makes it easier to identify that this is just a combining like terms problem. So I could add 0.213 plus 0.249 and get 0.462. And then divide both sides by 0.462. And we would get x is approximately, let's see, 80 divided by 0.462, 173.2 feet. So it's giving us the same answer, just in a slightly different way. Um, another way, a third method for solving the same problem, so I'm sort of giving you a bunch of different ways and you can pick whichever one you like best. So the third method for this is a when in doubt graph it out method. If you get to this place where you have x tan 12 plus x tan 14 equals 80, and you were like, crap, I don't know how to solve that. What you could do is go into your calculator and type in y1, x tangent 12 degrees plus x tangent 14 degrees, and in your y2, you could type in 80. Okay. So I go to my calculator, I go to my y equals, clear out any old stuff that's there. Okay, so I've got x tangent of 12, make sure you close your parentheses there, plus x tangent of 14 degrees, and I've got 80. And now I'm gonna have to fix my window a little bit. Just looking at this problem, the way I've got it drawn, it looks like x is gonna be bigger than 80. So I need to set my window so that x is something bigger than 80, and obviously I have to go at least up to 80 to see where they intersect. So my window, let's see, I don't care about negatives for this problem because it's a story problem where I'm using distances that are positive. I've gotta go bigger than 80, so like I'm gonna try 100 to start with. And then I don't care about negatives there either. Make my scale go by tens. My Y max has to at least go up to 80, so maybe I'll make that go up to 100 also and count by tens. Okay. So I see this line growing. This is probably my X tangent 12 plus X tangent 14, right? And then I'm getting my line at 80, and you can tell that they're not gonna intersect yet, that they're gonna intersect out here in space um, because I haven't gone out far enough on my x-axis. So I could use my table here to help me figure out, ooh, and I'm gonna make my tables jump by, start at zero and jump by 10. So let's see, I wanna see when my y values get bigger than 80. And it looks like it happens around 180, which, I mean, we know obviously because we did it a different way, but if you didn't know that the answer was 173, you'd probably have to use your table to help you get there. So let's see, I know I at least have to go out to 180, so I might as well make it 200. And then you wait for your graphing calculator to graph. Nice slow progression across the screen. Now that I've got my graph to show my work, or to show evidence of how I'm figuring this problem out, I would draw a quick graph and show where they intersect. Okay, and then second calc intersect, enter, 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 and I get 173.2 comma 80. And so that would give me my x value in a different way. Now, in this problem, once you know x, it's pretty easy to go back and find y and z because we have right here that y is just x tangent 12 and z is just x tangent 14. And so you would need to, on this problem, go back at the end and figure out what y and z are. So you would say x is about 173.2 feet. y is approximately, let's see, x tan 12, so 173.2 times the tangent of 12. So it comes out to about 
36.8 feet. And then Z is 173.2 or X tangent of 14, which comes out to about 43.2 feet. Okay. And then a nice thing to check, we know that Y and Z should add up to 80. And so it's good on your calculator to go back and check 36.8 plus 43.2. Sure enough, that adds up to 80. So that's a good way to make sure that you're doing the problem correctly. All right. Um, for our next problem, it's kind of similar. It's going to take a little bit of algebra. We've got a hot air balloon that's some unknown feet above the ground. We have, we're going to get some angles of depression. And so angles of depression are always from the line of sight. But when you get diagrams or when you're drawing your own diagram, this won't be there, so you're going to have to put the line of sight in. And then they measure down. So if I told you the angle of depression, I'll write that over here. Angle of depression to the first mile marker is, let's say, 24 degrees. Okay, Then that means the angle to the very first mile marker would be 24 degrees. So it's this big angle here. And then if I said the second angle of depression, let's call that phi, is at 20 degrees, then that's going to be the smaller of the two angles. It'll be right there. And since we usually talk about hot air balloons, um, like elevation being in feet, we're going to go ahead and convert this to feet. So instead of one mile between the mile markers, I'm going to say 5,280 feet between these two markers. Now, we don't know a lot of things in this problem. Um, we don't know the height, so we're kind of SOL there. We also don't know this distance. From the first, from the bottom of the balloon, or we're directly under the balloon to the first mile marker. So I'm going to call that x. That's an unknown for us, also. Okay. This tells us that if we have two unknowns, we're going to have to set up two equations. Um, we need two right triangles. So I'm going to look at this right triangle right here, and notice that this 24 degrees is alternate interior with this angle right here. So this must also be 24 degrees and that this 20 degrees is alternate interior angles with this guy right here. These two are alternate interior. So this guy is 20. Okay. So now I have this right triangle with the opposite and the adjacent. So tangent of 24 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. And then I have this bigger triangle right here I also have the opposite and the adjacent. And you have to be a little careful here. Tangent of 20 degrees equals the opposite side, which is h. My adjacent side is this whole thing, though. It's the x, the unknown, and it's the mile between the mile markers. So this adjacent side is x plus 5,280. Okay. Now I have two equations with two unknowns, so let's go ahead and start the algebraic process of getting some things by themselves. So I always like to get rid of fractions when I can. So I'm going to multiply this side by x. And that gives me x tangent of 24 degrees equals h. Here I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 5,280. I'll just use the distributive property there to distribute it to both. So I'm going to get x plus 5,280 times the tangent of 20. Okay. And now that these are both equal to x, or both equal to h, that means they have to be equal to each other. So I can say x tangent of 24 degrees equals x plus 5,280 tangent of 20 degrees. Okay. Um, I'm not going to finish the notes on this. What I would like for you guys to do in your notes is to try and work through one of the methods that I showed you above from this point. So your options are um, you can try to solve this out strictly algebraically using things like um, factoring or the distributive property. Okay. You can turn your tangents into decimals and that might help you figure out how to do the problem like we did in method two. Or you can try and work out a way to do this graphically like we did in method three. Whichever way that you choose, though, um, please figure this out and figure out what x is 
And then I'd also like for you to go through and figure out what h is. So you're going to be finding both this x and you're going to be finding the height h. Um, and you know, if you want to be super turbo, do it one way and then see if you can do another method. Because it's always good to have sort of two tools in your back pocket. Um, all right, that's it for notes. I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you tomorrow.